Right then, part two of the Lost Holy Grounds on the Bayonetta Hard difficulty video walkthrough by Seraphim17, which is me for any new listeners. And I've just come out of the shop there after buying all the... Ah, there you go. There's the stinger. I love that move. I'm just a dumb bastard, so it's took me two levels to figure out I can buy it. And that's the only reason I kept that loading sequence in, to show you exactly what the stinger is for all those that are uninitiated to Devil May Cry speak. And up here is a, a little puzzle to open the door, it's, it's nothing that's going to really tax your brain, you just have to jump off of this at a certain height and trigger that weight pad down there, that little pressure plate. A nice piece of obvious trivia is to destroy all the, the vases and the and the containers there so that you can get any treasures or any helpful items from them. And now we're in the Yorgamunders staff with the Umalat, so you know they mean business. And when we try going up here we're going to trigger a couple of fights and um, they're pretty fun fights so it's nothing to worry about too much. But um, you can get your ass kicked because this environment is kind of small, so be very careful. And there we go, it's a couple of the, the big red and gold sword and shield dudes. And it's always fun to start off with a nice little torture move if you've got one. And there you go, YBY, destroying everything. And a nice little double juggle there, that was quite nice. Lynching them motherfuckers, they never know what him. I mean, just look at that. If you can get any enemy in the air, they are just lost for words. They have no retort. And I'm trying to pick up that sword again, even though I've told your guys not to do it. <laughs> I'm such a fucking hypocrite. But you play how you want to play. No matter how much you watch my videos, no matter how much you listen to me rant on like the, the fucking idiot I am, you're going to get a completely different playstyle to me because you should never try and imitate to the T exactly what I'm doing. You've just got to watch this and appreciate the different skill factors that you're seeing and hopefully if you can put them into your style of play, you'll become a better player. Because trying to just completely imitate how somebody does something is never going to be natural to you. So you should always try and put your own twist on it. Like I said, this, this is merely a guide what I'm trying to do here for you guys. It's, it's not the only way this game can be played because this is one of the games that's got so much diversity and so much choice it can be approached to any kind of playstyle. I mean just look on YouTube there's probably a run on the hardest difficulty taking no damage with just the pistols or something ridiculous like that because there are some sick motherfuckers out there with I don't know too much time too much money I don't know I can't really speak either because I'm doing this stuff but um, crazy people, sadistic people that make me look like a fucking lightweight. And here you go again with a, a recurring puzzle element here. And a fight you cannot skip against a, a lightning dog. <laughs> Who runs straight into the ferris wheel torture attack. Always fun. And there we go, he charges himself into his own stun. And watch, this sword is really slow, but it gets the job done, thankfully. And he turns into coins, which is always a good thing. And if more people died and turned into coins, this, this world would be a very rich, a very cherished place. Another the puzzle there, the exact same puzzles you've seen earlier on, just to intersperse between all the fighting. And this is an interesting section because it's, it's, as you can tell, it's in the middle of like a monsoon. And you can fall off this pipe because there is a, a current to it which kind of, you can see it dragging me here. So be careful on your way up here and these little windy snake things, uh, they were designed by the same person that put in the, the manta ray motherfucker stupid enemies, the silly wheel fire douchebag enemies and everything else about this game is dog shit. So it's gonna annoy you, it's gonna frustrate you and it's gonna chip away at your life unnecessarily. And behind this fountain here as you'll see is uh, another part of a weapon to assemble hidden in this chest. And I think it's the, the Odettes. I may be wrong. 
I am wrong. I don't think that's the audit, so I'm not too sure what that was actually. It was a little bit too quick. <laughs> Suffice to say, I go to the menu to see if I can equip them without realizing you have to go to the fucking shopkeeper. <laughs> You see, you can put, invest a lot of time into this game and still not know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> but if you take, I mean, I think it's a, a year since I last played this, so that's, that's a long time in video gaming, especially when you play as many games as I do. And be careful here, because you can fall off as I nearly do there, and it'll take a good chunk of your life away with it. You don't have to rush this section either, because this is all preset to, to be timed from when you trip invisible tripwires. And this is going to lead directly into a boss fight against what you've just seen. And you're going to fight these things quite regularly on the later levels. And I do a much better job of dispatching them on the later levels than I do right now. So this is how not to fight these guys. <laughs> Look at this, this is fucking ridiculous. Stun them with your gun, as soon as you've stunned them, do a nice little combo. And if you watch here, when he does his tail whip, even if you dodge it perfectly, and you can tell I'm dodging it perfectly because I get witch time. Uh, sorry, I get the the torture emblems. But no witch time, which means only certain attacks will trigger witch time on this guy. And I think it's the fire breath and the bite. Don't quote me on that because I've it's been a while, like I say. But this is a sloppy fight and there's absolutely no excuse for it because these enemies are pussies. Now we get to play Rocky Four on this dude's face. And a lot of you may be wondering why I don't turn notifications off when I record. The main reason for that is I'm an achievement whore, and if there's a chance I might get an achievement to pop, I, I can't help but have notifications on. Uh, that in itself is a bad excuse because I've already got a thousand G in this game because it's, it's not very difficult to do. But that's the reason why I keep them on if anybody's been wondering. Crow made of hair has just dicked that snake thing, bird. There you go, if you ever see a crow made of hair, run. Unless you're a witch, and then pet it. Yeah, probably, you know, take it somewhere. But like I said, this is one of the more challenging chapters of the game, so it's never that simple. You're going to be fighting a couple more enemies and you're gonna be taking on Jean or Jean or Jeanne or whatever you want to pronounce the, the the red witch with short hair and it can be a difficult fight because she's a cheap bitch and witch time only activates on wicked weaves which is annoying but at the same time it can be a very short fight because if you get lucky and you manage to hit her with a full combo you will strip her life very quickly. And this is a fight that is interspersed with cutscenes, so you generally don't have to fight her for too long as long as you're doing damage. We're also um, on the eve of unlocking the Panther ability. Which is always fun, because you move really quickly with the Panther. One thing it does do though, um, if you were relying on just panicking and bashing the evade button to get your witch time, that's no longer going to happen. Because before you could do, is it 4 or 5, and then she does the last flip and then stays on all fours like a, a bitch waiting to take a pound in. And the reason for that is it's obviously a developer choice so that you can't spam it, it has to be skilled to get the evade. Well, the panther ability takes that one step further. If you double tap it, you're going to turn into a panther. So if you're just tapping the trigger and hoping to get the dodge, it's going to turn you into a panther and you're going to get a, a knife to the face or a tail to the face or something. A good example's right here. I mean, look at this. I'm dodging this motherfucker perfectly. I'm getting no reward. And then he cheeses me with that dog shit move. And then he flies away because that's how cowards fight. But he's not going to last much longer, as you'll see. Look at that. Why wait? Be wait. Why? It's the ticket to winning on this game. And then you smash this gate, and it's it's time to to witness a bit of witch on witch action. I'm fully clothed, unfortunately, but you know we get what we get.
And there's not much to really say when you're fighting uh, Jean or Jean, because she fights a lot like you do. And one, if you fought her once, you kind of know what she's going to do. She's very fast. She counters after two or three hits, unless you get her from the side or from behind. And um, which time against her is practically useless, unless you time your evade very well on a move she's doing. So you've just got to fight her the same way you do. If she jumps away, she's always going to come down with the drop kick. You'll see her do it every fight. She evades, she comes back in. She goes up, she comes down. She does the same every time. Up. Counter. Get her from side, you get two hits. Ooh, that one nice. You can knock her into the air and try and juggle her, but it's not the most successful technique. She generally gets out of it very quickly. She's asking for it there. Take that, bitch. Up. Down. Flips back, flips forward. Up, down once again. Wicked Weave, which I should have dodged. Another cutscene, you see. Very quick fight if you're doing consecutive damage. If you're not damaging her, this fight can be a lot longer. It's a little misleading. See what I mean? You do one move, she blocks it, she counters. And for some reason, the YBY is not the best move against her, because... The blade hits her on the final hit, which is the most significant damage that you can do with that combo, but she seems to be immune to it a lot of the time. So beat her as you can. If you die a couple times, it's expected until you learn how to fight her correctly. What's the matter, sweetie? Afraid of something, are you? And I think this is another unskippable cutscene, because you're... Oh no, I tell a lie, I just skipped it. <laughs> and there you go. Panther! kind of the moment where they should have licensed the Thundercats introduction song and just played it. <laughs> that would have been pretty great. Anyhow guys, I'll see you in the next video. Keep watching.